His jersey says Favre, but not number four, and he's not even thinking about retirement yet. He is Dylan Favre, Brett's nephew and a freshman quarterback at Mississippi State. And don't discount talent being in the DNA here. It appears that Dylan has turned what was expected to be a two-man quarterback competition for the Bulldogs into a three-way battle. Second-year head coach Dan Mullen must like that, and he joins us now in first take to talk more about his Favre and then a whole bunch of other stuff, too. But I am going to start there. So has he taken any heckling, like whether or not he's going to retire, whether he's going to make a decision yet, anything like that? No, he, he, he the guys on the team will ask his opinion. Hey, we saw your uncle's doing this, your uncle's doing that. And uh, he came out, he'll pick up his phone. He said, no, nah, I don't think that's right just yet. He'll check the text message. That's pretty you good. Know, he, he's a great kid, really competitor. You can see... Uh, uh, I guess his uncle must be a good player because if his uncle has any of the same characteristics that Dylan has, he must be pretty good. I'm saying, comparisons aren't fair, but it happens all the time, and especially when you're related to somebody. Just give us some idea. What is Dylan like as a quarterback? Uh, he's a winner. He's a winner. Yeah, I mean, he led his team last year to the uh, the state championship in the state of Mississippi. Uh, I think he holds almost every state record in passing in the state. And, uh, you know, when he walks on the field, he's got that demeanor about him. Uh, you know, he, he doesn't have the perfect throwing motion. He throws off balance a lot. He'll throw whips some Ooh, outside. Wait, I've arm seen somebody there. else who does that. But I, I, I tell you what, when he steps on the field, he's going to find a way to win the game. Uh, so how is your quarterback competition shaping up then now with the three guys? It's pretty good. You know, you have Chris Ralph and Chris, Chris, uh, you know, played for us a bunch last year. Right. Uh, coming in, Tyler Russell, who was the uh, state player of the year, the, the year before Dylan was actually the, last year. Uh, you know, and those guys are all battling for the position. One thing, you know, we're still a couple weeks before we have to play. And uh, a lot of times what we do in training camp is they all get equal reps. Right. And we're trying to develop all three of them. You don't know, and you're an injury away from one right. of those guys having to be ready on the field. So uh, we're still in, in, the, in the developmental stage of all three of them. Five wins last year. For you, I know nobody likes putting numbers on it, but I'm going to ask anyway. Realistically, <laughs> how much improvement would you like to see win-wise? Well, you know, uh, coming into the season, our goal, uh, our focus from the, the, the day the last season ended uh, to now is to find a way to win the SEC West and get to Atlanta. Uh, people might think we're crazy. We're playing the last three national champions all <laughs> hey, No problem. But, um, you know, we're, we're, that's, our, that's our goal. That's our objective. But, you know, really for us, we want to improve. If we're going to improve as a football team uh, from a 5-7 and seven season, that's going to get us bowl eligible minimally to get us to a bowl game this year and, and really build for the future of this program. One step at a time is, is what everybody says. <laughs> it's just hard to do it when you're entrenched in that moment. You've got a few cowbells on your side despite being the Bulldogs. This is a tradition at Mississippi State. How loud does it get with those cowbells? You know what? It's a great tradition. It's, it, it, traditions are what make college football so yep. special. It, it makes it the greatest, really one of the, the greatest sports in, in all of the world. Yeah. Is college football Saturdays, especially in the South. And, you know, they've been having cowbells there since the 20s at <laughs> right. Mississippi State. So, um, you know, this year they just changed the rule. We're allowed to bring them back into the stadium and ring them at certain times during the game. And, you know, our fan base all received pamphlets when they're allowed to ring the cowbells, when they're not. But, you know what, it just makes for a really neat atmosphere on a Saturday. And uh, it gets loud, gives us a little home field advantage. Well, I was thinking as you were saying that and talking about the tradition of it, the Vuvuzelas that we saw in the World Cup soccer, and those are great fans too. Can you imagine if your fans were allowed to have vuvuzelas? Yeah, it'd be a different sound. Like <laughs> I, I, I enjoy the ringing of the cowbells. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, Tim Tebow is a guy I want to ask you about. You had a chance to coach him, uh, offensive coordinator at Florida. There's a lot of debate whether or not he's going to be able to make it at the NFL level. From what you know, from what you see in him, why do you believe that he can do that? Well, Tim's a winner, and you know I think when when you have that, a, a lot of things get overlooked at the quarterback position, um, and the most and biggest one that gets overlooked is your ability to win and your ability to lead that competitive fire that you have. Uh, a lot of the great quarterbacks, I'm, I'm sure you can find flaws in all of them yeah. uh, that that have that have played in the NFL and done a lot of good things. But the one of the most successful things is all of them are winners. All of them have that that it. I don't know what it, you know what, what when people say the right. it factor. Tim Tebow has that it factor, and as long as he has that, I think he's he's in a great program. Josh McDaniels, great coach. Uh, Josh also a great offensive mind that's going to tweak and, and build things around Tim and around his strengths. And as long as he does that, he's going to be successful. Did you see his haircut, the Friar haircut that they gave him? Yeah, I saw. It looked pretty interesting. You know, I, <laughs> the uh, you know what the great thing that Tim has though, uh, it, Tim is a football player and as a kid wants to be a team guy. And right. He's going to be able to laugh that off. It, it, and he did, and then they let him shave it. I, I, what would it take to get a similar look on you? Well, I don't know. What, what, I mean, what would if we you can have find to a happen? way to get to Atlanta, I told our guys I'll do. They can pick what I wear if we go to Atlanta right there. I'll, they can mohawk me. They can do anything they want. Uh, if it's going to help us win, 
I'll cut. I'll yeah. take that. <laughs> You'll cut the haircut. I'll shave it. Whatever, whatever it takes. <laughs> Most guys are superstitious along those lines. Well, as you said, it's not exactly like you're playing in a cakewalk kind of conference there, but we wish you luck this season. Thanks for stopping by and talking, gosh, everything across the spectrum. We well, thanks for having me on. It's a lot of fun to be here. Our pleasure. The second hour of ESPN First Take starts right now.